So I'm just taking uh, some shiitakes that are ready to ready to go into our fruiting uh, growing rooms, and uh, yeah, getting them ready to go. So these were inoculated uh, three months ago. So we let them go for about eight to 12 weeks. Then also with, uh, I grow 3782 and shiitake 3790. With the 3782, I found giving the, bat, the block a, a light smack on each side helps stimuli, stimulate uh, fruit body production. So do that before I put them in the grow room. And they say that it kind of acts as a, simulates nature as when the tree falls and hits the ground, it shocks the mycelium into producing the, the mushrooms so they can kind of spread their spores and repeat the, repeat the life cycle. I'm just gonna throw some of these on since uh, I just mopped in here. I'll just take my bags and I just rip them open. I'll just tear them up, tear them out. And the shiitakes produce a lot of metabolites, so we can see this brown, brown juice or liquid, and that's totally natural. So that's just uh, the mushroom, mushrooms producing a waste byproduct. As the mycelium breaks down the sawdust, it exudes these metabolites. And it said too that the metabolites also contain a lot of uh, anti you know, no novel antibacterial and antimicrobial compounds. Shiitake does a really good job of decomposing and breaking down. I put the block in. I also place it in upside down. That way, the most of the mushrooms do form on the bottom of the block. Really don't get many on the on the top. So I'll just go through and keep it going. We'll fill this whole room up with it. Sometimes you might see like a shiitake that grew on its own. So we'll just remove of that. And I'm just doing four blocks per shelf. Sometimes I can put six on there if I move them all like this, but there's no need to currently. So I'll just do four per shell. So yeah, each block has been thoroughly colonized with our mushroom mycelium. Uh, we've inoculated uh, this oak hardwood sawdust that's just been supplemented with a, a percentage of wheat bran for additional nutrition about three months ago. So from that time, the mycelium, it you know started from petri dish to spawn and then it was inoculated to sawdust blocks. Those sawdust blocks were also broken down and inoculated into more production blocks. So it's been quite a journey. Now we're at time for fruiting so once we open this bag we're going to expose this mushroom mycelium to the rich O2 levels and high humidity levels in our growing room which is going to signal for the mushrooms to just really explode through these blocks and just cover them with beautiful shiitake mushrooms. It's a very quick producer. We can expect to be harvesting these mushrooms seven days from the day that we put them in. So within two days, we're gonna see little primordia starting to pop up all over our mushroom blocks. And then every day they'll start to double in size until we reach full maturity. So it's quite an amazing process and shiitakes are quite an amazing mushroom. Definitely a hard working mycelium you could just really see that it's able to really break down this oak hardwood sawdust really well and shiitake is a little bit more work than most mushrooms where you know you do have to remove the bag but it's pretty nice when it's time to dispose of them or if you're composting them where you don't even have to take the you know bags out of the plastic or if it's an oyster mushroom or a lion's mane you do have to eventually remove it to compost it so it makes for an easy composter or in addition to a garden bed. So if you're growing uh, some shiitake blocks from like a grow kit or any mushroom from a grow kit that for that matter, you could just mix it into your garden for added benefits. If you do see mushrooms growing in your garden, um, you'll probably be able to tell if it's like a gold or a pink oyster from if you mix you know, some of your own spawn in your garden. 
you just see some random ones popping in there, it could be a good sign that there's a nice, rich mycorrhizal relationship going on with the soil and the mushroom mycelium. And that actually really helps benefit plants and aids in growth. Uh, so the mushroom mycelium is able to help transport certain nutrients to the root system of the plant, as well as breaking down essential nutrients in the soil and, and aiding in, in the distribution to the root system. So mushroom mycelium is very crucial to all environments. Without the mycelium, you don't have uh, an ecosystem. So if you do see mushrooms in your garden, it's definitely a good thing. Whether intentionally planted or not, it's great. These tables make it really nice for just wheeling blocks around. Uh, very durable and really useful. And if you don't, if you have a problem tearing the bags, you can always use a knife or a box cutter. But for me, this is a quicker, saves me a little bit of time. I just rip it open. I currently have the humidity set to about 88%. Since I'm just putting these blocks in here right now, we want that really high humidity to encourage these mushrooms to, to really come out. So as they continue to grow, we'll gradually lower the humidity up until harvest to around the low 80s. That way we can kind of preserve the shelf life as we move the mushrooms into refrigeration. But during the beginning stages, we want that 90%, as close to 90 to 95% humidity as possible to encourage the really good pin set across your block. So that nice humid climate around the surface of, of our shiitake blocks will encourage really nice growth and uh, just lots of pins where we see a good amount of mushrooms. And one way you could do it too is some people will prune it to kind of Sometimes you can get a lot of mushrooms on here and to encourage some of the mushrooms to grow bigger, you can always prune and cut some mushrooms away in the early stages. Then that way you have fewer mushrooms, but you get bigger mushrooms. So that can save you some time and labor when it's come, come to harvest. Sometimes I do, but I actually like, I let the mushroom blocks do their thing and I, I let them, all of them grow. I don't go in and do any kind of pruning. If we do get mushrooms that grow on the bottom of our blocks, we will go through and prune those off early on. So that way we can redirect any energy that was going to go into growing out those mushrooms on the bottom into just growing out the rest of the crop that we can visibly see. So we also don't want mushrooms that have grown into the bottom because they kind of get damaged and they just don't look as good uh, when they've grown into the racks. So here's some shiitake blocks that were actually inoculated one month ago. And here next to it is some very ripe shiitake blocks that were inoculated about 12 weeks ago and ready to go in the grow room today. As we can see, there's a huge difference. The mushroom mycelium of the shiitake usually finishes around two weeks, after which it begins to pop corn. Uh, it's a term used uh, with this phase where you get this really bumpy kind of surface across your block. And then after which we let it ripen from this phase to, to browning. So after several more weeks, the block begins to brown and we get to a nice thick layer of a, like a brown mycelium on the outer skirts of the block. And that, that really uh, lets us know that it's time to go into fruiting. This is our 3782 and 3790. 3790 just forms a block that's it's really nice. It's very bumpy. Um, it produces really nice, dense, meaty caps. Uh, that are really nice. We like growing a couple different varieties at a time just to have uh, mushroom diversity. Just pre-smacking all my bags before I get to the grow area. All right, so I continue just loading up the, the grow room with the shiitake. Shiitake is really cool because it's super medicinal as well as super delicious when applied in a culinary aspect. aspect. Um, it's known to you know really help with uh, boosting the overall immune function. It's really good at that, and it's also been shown to help with like cancer and chemotherapy treatment, stuff like that. It reduces fatigue. It's also really good for the skin. That's really cool about it. It's also a wide range strain, so it grows throughout. I can grow it all year, 55 to 80 degrees. 
even though our grow room really doesn't get above 70 to 75 throughout the summertime. A lot of new cultivators will get kind of intimidated by shiitake, but it's quite easy to grow and really just takes a little bit of patience. About this size, about 10 pounds is a good size shiitake block. You could do like a 15 pound block if you wanted to in this bag. So you can get like the substrate up to here, but it's, it's not as productive. We found that you get, uh, you basically can get more, uh, more mushrooms if you just keep it at around 10 pounds per block. And I just peel off these mushrooms because if they're left to sit in the grow room, they can be the sites for contaminants or bacteria to grow on since they're basically old mushrooms. The 3790 is really interesting. It's, I would say it takes a little bit longer to brown than the 3782. So if you're just starting out, I think 3782 might possibly be a better shiitake to start growing. Colonize is a bit quicker and colonizes about the same speed but it browns a bit quicker and I mean you can even go into fruiting about eight weeks with better results as opposed to 3790 taking more towards 12 weeks before you get the brown block. I'm probably not going to fill this whole grow room up with shiitake for this week because we uh, don't need that much. Just off of this side alone we'll probably get about 110 pounds. So. I think we're, all, we're we'll, we'll be good for that. As you can see how I label my blocks, it says LE 3790 G2. So LE just means shiitake, and 37, or LE means the species, Lentinuli edotis, so that's shiitake. And 3790 is just a strain. And G2 means that I've taken a bag of grain spawn, inoculated some shiitake blocks, then I used those shiitake blocks and turned each of those into 10 new blocks. So this was one of those blocks that was inoculated with sawdust uh, spawn. So that's basically it. So you'll come to learn all the mushroom species and stuff like that by their, their Latin, Latin names. So definitely uh, shiitake could be a messy mushroom to grow if you're growing it at your own home or inside your house. It makes more of a mess than any mushroom. You get a lot of uh, brown metabolite-like juice and liquid. And then on top of that, it's a messy harvest as well. With all the trimming and cutting, there's lots of debris that's it's created from grown shiitake compared to other mushrooms. I mean, you could have a couple different kits at the, at the same time. You could potentially have a shiitake, a lion's mane, and an oyster mushroom kit all growing in the same room. Um, so you could just have fun. Uh, really don't see uh, any reason why to limit, limit your growing. So I used, to, I used to have hundreds of blocks growing in my house. So and they do just fine. One thing you could do so you don't overwhelm yourself is uh, I just loaded one side of my grow room today, then I can come back in like another couple days or whatnot and just get the other side loaded. When I come in to harvest this day, it's gonna be over 100 pounds of mushrooms, so just a little bit over 100 pounds, so I just don't wanna overwhelm myself for one work day because most likely I'll be bouncing through each grow room and harvesting more mushrooms. So I'll load that side in the next two days and then that way I'll have another harvest of mushrooms that I can harvest a couple days later. So plan accordingly and just set yourself up for a successful harvest.